forth on the earth from the blood of Abel, the first man that was murdered by his brother, and in the uh, thousand year reign of Christ, that's the seventh day, but there was an eighth day in the Old Testament, the day of circumcision. And then the world being circumcised by the sword of the Spirit, even after Satan, uh, you know, Christ is very fair. Uh, Jesus Christ is a very fair God. He doesn't deal with other gods like uh, they deal with him. The gods of the earth curse him. The gods of man curse the Lord and Savior. And they curse Jehovah God. But Jesus is so fair in his justice and his righteousness. That's why he's the lamb slain. That's why he was the, the one that was chosen to go to Calvary. That even after he has supremacy in his hands and uh, he has ruled the earth and proven that nations can be saved from the holocaust of war and sin because for 1,000 years man will not learn war anymore. The Bible said he'll beat his plowshares, his sword into plowshares, and his spear, and that's armaments of war, into pruning hooks. And the Bible speaks of the uh, little uh, child sitting down over the hole of the asp and uh, the, the serpent not biting the child it speaks of the um, it shows us a beautiful world coming up uh, where that the uh, wolf will, uh, will dwell with a lion and a lamb and they won't fight they won't bite they won't eat each other up because that nature will be removed from the earth and removed from man and uh, I, some of this is described in the book of Isaiah in uh, various places, but the 65th chapter, uh, it said there, uh, and a little child shall lead them. Uh, these fierce animals of the forest uh, that would devour a child, the lion, the bear, and uh, the wolf, but a little child will lead them. There will be such peace and that nature that's so fierce in man. Someone said, why was that lion to eat me? Why would that lion that you visit in the zoo or you go to Africa and see them in the wild, uh, why would they want to eat me? Why would they want to do that? I'm a human being. Why would they be so carnivorous? They would want to eat me up. Well, the reason of that is because man wants to eat manna. So that nature in man has been transmitted to the animal. You never read about a lion eating a lion or a lion eating a, another animal or an innocent lamb until Abel slays, that is Cain, a slave Abel. It took the first man being uh, murderous in his spirit to turn the nature of the animal world even as he cursed the earth. For his sake the earth was cursed. And a complete change around. And all the uh, botanical and, and zoological and, and all the world of creation, it just became opposite than what God created it to be. God created it to be peaceful and a beautiful garden and man living there and the serpent not uh, being uh, there to destroy him, but suddenly the serpent appears. But when we look at the, uh, the condition of a thousand years of Christ's reign, proving that he is king of kings and lord of lords, and we read that uh, beautiful uh, picture then Jesus is so fair that he gives Satan, uh, turns him loose out of the bottomless pit, uh, lets him go. After a thousand years, he's so fair that he just says, all right, Satan, go out and see what you'll do. I really think uh, that Satan would have had a chance to repent right there if he would have taken it. You know, some people don't take advantage. Some, some creation doesn't take advantage of what God gives them, Amen. just like the grace of God. Did you know you can refuse to take advantage of the grace of God? Amen. And I can, take it, I can refuse Amen. to take advantage of the grace of God. I can live my life on earth 
and all the grace that God would give me, all the grace he would forgive me with, all the grace he would put in my spirit to love my fellow man and love my sister and my brother. I can just pass it by, become hard and callous, say it's not for me, I don't want any part of it, I don't want that of a church, I don't want that religion, I don't want that a fellowship, I don't want that uh, kind of life, and we'll refuse to take advantage of the wonderful grace of God. But I want to take advantage of grace tonight. I feel grace in my spirit. I feel grace in this church. I feel grace in my heart. I feel grace in the time I'm living in. I'm glad to be living right now. It's such an exciting time. It's such a moment when the God is getting ready to end the ages and end the world and end the age of the Gentile and bring to close uh, 6,000 years of man's existence and start a beautiful Sabbath day, a day of Sabbath in which the nations will keep the Sabbath and Jerusalem will once again be the capital of the world, the holy city, and the nations will go in and out of not Washington, D.C., not Moscow, Russia, no. uh, not Paris, France, no. but the nations are going to go in and out of Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, the holy city. Praise the name of the Lord. And we're living in that time right now. It looks like that Jesus is so fair uh, that even uh, he, it looks like he offered some grace to Satan. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. I doubt Satan would have had that nature toward Christ, why well, he doesn't even want to praise him right now. The devil doesn't even want to give praise to God. You know, and, and, and the devil taking your nature, taking your human spirit, you'll not give praise to God. You'll, you'll let Satan cause you not to give praise to God, and not to praise him, not to give him glory and honor. But I'm telling you right now, Satan, you are defeated. I am not going to let you do me. You're not going to rule my house. There's another man here that rules my house. Praise the name of the Lord. That Jesus Christ is the ruler of my house. Jesus Christ is the Lord of this church. He's the Lord of this house. And, and when I think about uh, that picture, and I see uh, that it's such a... And, uh, so, so Satan cannot defeat uh, the church. I don't care what kind of dirt and slander and garbage and gossip uh, that Satan wants to bring upon the church. Uh, uh, listen, a lie is a lie, a lie is a lie. And you don't have to be afraid of 10,000 lies. Just be afraid of the truth. Because a lie will never do anything but be a lie. I don't care who says it. I don't care where it comes from. I don't care if it comes over the internet. I don't care if it comes from a magazine or a letter or a mouth. It's a lie. And uh, the only thing that truth does it sets you free. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, truth sets you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You don't have to be under the tongue of anybody. You don't have to be under anybody's foot. You don't have to be under anybody's uh, uh, word. Uh, don't let a negative word be your prison, uh, your house. Don't let a, a negative word be your jailer. Uh, there's only one tonight. That is your Lord and Master. Praise the name of the Lord. Satan cannot defeat the church. Satan cannot defeat an individual. Uh, Satan cannot defeat you. I don't want you to sit there and think. And another thing is, you can live holy right here on this earth. You can live godly. You don't have to be a drug head, a dope head, an alcoholic. You don't have to be caught up in uh, the medical prescription drugs. You don't have to be caught up in the pornographic stuff going on in the world right now. You don't have to be a partaker of the sludge and the dirt and the filth of the uh, internet. You don't have to be a partaker of any man's sin. You don't have to be a partaker of anybody's prison of sin and wrong and dirt and evil because Jesus is the champion of the church tonight and he is the head of the body. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You can live godly. 
in this present world. Oh, yeah. You can be encouraged in this present world. Oh, yeah. You can be a child of God in this present world. You don't have to walk around with fear. I don't let anybody, uh, uh, listen, the cowards that attack you live in the dark. They never come out in the light. Any coward that has ever attacked in my life since I've been a minister of the gospel, he lived in the darkness, he lived in the shadows, he never, never came out, he never showed his face, he never spoke his name uh, because he lived in the filth. Satan doesn't live in light. Satan lives in the pit. Satan doesn't live on top side. Satan lives in the bottomless pit. Satan doesn't live in ethics and righteousness right. and godliness and kindness. He doesn't live in purity. He doesn't live in praising the Lord. Right. He never praises the Lord. Right. Satan never praises the Lord. Right. Never gives God yeah. glory to God. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something right now. He will not defeat the church. Amen. He will not defeat right. the church. Yeah, right. The Bible does not say that Jesus Christ was bound with chains and put in a bottomless pit. It said the devil was. Jesus Christ came out of the grave and has never seen a defeat or a failure and never will in leading the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He's never going back to, uh, to the grave. He never will be in a pit. But Satan is going to the pit. The works of evil are going to the pit. Yes, Satan is going to be defeated. I know who's going to win this war. Right. I know who's going to win this war. Yes, I don't. I know who's going to win this warfare with sickness yes, and disease yes. and trouble and sorrow yes, and sin. Get your head up. You're a child of God. You're set free. You're not a prisoner. You're clean. You're sanctified. You're set apart. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You're not going to be the victim of somebody's tongue. You, You're not going to be the victim of somebody's idea. Cowards live in the darkness. And I'll tell you something else. A coward dies a thousand deaths before his time. But a child of God only dies one death. And that's the death to the will of the flesh and to the will of the body. And he goes to the grave, but he lies in Christ. And he sleeps in Christ. And he's called the dead in Christ. And he's not the dead in the graveyard. He's the dead in Christ. They, they sleep in Christ. They're not the dead. They're not the dead that just sleep in a grave. So why be fearful? The Lord is the light of my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my strength. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise you tonight is a happy church, a victorious church. And so uh, I look at that picture there, and, and uh, Satan cannot defeat the church. Uh, he may attack me with, her, uh, with any instrument of physical attack. He may attack me. Listen, he can take my body. Fear not him who can destroy the body. Fear not him who can destroy the body. Somebody said, but uh, you, you, you'll die. Uh, saints of God die. They die with affliction. They die sometimes with cancer. They die sometimes with uh, affliction of various kinds. Uh, sometimes they don't overcome uh, the affliction of physical illness. Uh, but they're not defeated because uh, sometimes uh, they're attacked and they're slandered. And their name is made mud uh, by cowards who live in the darkness uh, and live in the uh, shadows uh, of pseudo names uh, on the internet and uh, live under the shadow of, uh, of, of all that stuff called Facebook and what have you, uh, which, well, which I never go, I never, I never live there, that's not my habitat, uh, but they live there, but they're, they're cowards, they don't, they don't come out in the open, uh, Satan will never fight you openly, he'll never give you a fair fight. He'll never, he'll never give you a fair uh, chance uh, because he knows that the only thing he has is a lie. That all he has is a lie. Satan doesn't have one weapon outside of a lie. And he puts a handle on the handle of a lie and tries to defeat a child of God. But he is a liar. Uh, he is a liar. Jesus said that he's a, a liar and the father of lies. But Jesus Christ is truth. There really is a heaven. He did say, in my father's house are many mansions. He wasn't lying to you. In his father's house, there's many mansions. John 14. He did say, let not your heart be troubled. Well, don't let your heart be troubled. He did say uh, that, that I go to prepare a place for you. Do you doubt it? I don't doubt it. I know that even if I would be overcome, 
by someone that could destroy my body or something that could destroy my body. If a gun would end my physical life, it doesn't touch my soul. Amen. It doesn't touch my spirit. Amen. Fear not him who can destroy your body right. and can do no more. Amen. Jesus said that. Yes. He said that. Yes. We're not to fear tonight. He's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Praise the name of the Lord. He that hath fear hath torment. I don't have any fear tonight because I'm serving a mighty God. Didn't we sing that song in the beginning? Didn't we sing that victorious song at the start with? Praise the name of the Lord. Didn't we sing that? Didn't that lift us up? Didn't we feel the power of God come in this building? I thought I can feel it right now. The Holy Ghost is still here. Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, it's just like the Lord uh, to just give the child of God extra ornament. Uh, and when, when I need a shield of faith, he'll give that to me. Yes. When I need a sword of the Spirit, he'll give that to me. Yes. When I need a, a helmet of salvation, he'll give that to me. Yes. When I need my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, he'll give that to me. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise he the Lord. never leaves me unarmed. Praise I'm not defenseless against the work of Satan. Uh, but Satan is going to the bottomless pit. And my, 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 2,000 years from now, uh, or so I can hear the last words of, of Jesus uh, and being said uh, and when he says the last words uh, uh, and he speaks and tells the father father there isn't one other person going to die on the earth there's no more death and the bottomless pit is through the, the, the uh, battle of Gog and Magog is through the last great battle is through there's not going to be any more ambulances cry in the night, no, no more hospitals are going to be built. There's not going to be any more places uh, called nursing homes because the age will not be there. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. There'll be no more diseases in the water. The water will be pure. There'll be a pure river of water of life. Clear as crystal, flowing out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. I won't need to pay. Let's see, do I have $180 to pay the uh, utility bill with this month? Uh, uh, can I can I make it? Because the Lamb will be the light oh, yeah. of not only the heavenly city of heaven itself, but the earth will be lit up oh, yeah. with a light uh, from the Lamb and His rule on this earth. What a day that will be when there's no more sin. There's a new earth. There's a new heaven. We're in dwelleth righteousness. Praise the name of the Lord. And I read the 20th chapter of Revelation, and it tells me, uh, look, look at, let's, let's, let's take a glimpse uh, at the closing days uh, when Christ uh, is triumphant, not just for a season, not just for a thousand years, not just for a time, but he is eternally righteous, and God will receive the kingdom as Jesus turns it back to him. What a day that will be. What a coronation it will be when Christ uh, is finally the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now in the 20, uh, 20th chapter of Revelation, uh, it speaks about, uh, in uh, verse uh, uh, 12, uh, no, verse 11, and this is the closing day. Uh, this is when Satan finally acknowledges he is defeated forever. He's not going to be put back in a bottomless pit here and given change for a thousand years. He muffed the ball, just like he's muffing the ball tonight. Yeah. If he was going to defeat this church, he should have defeated it 20 years ago. Yeah. But he couldn't defeat it 20 years ago, and he's not going to defeat it now. Yeah. I said, if he's going to defeat this church, he'll have defeated it 25 years ago. But he didn't defeat it then, and he's not going to defeat it now. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. He had his chance. Satan has had his chance. God has given Satan 70 years to wipe this church out of the city of Bradenton. He's used everything he can use. He's coming everybody with anything he can come with. Lies, gossip, slander, uh, illness, uh, pain, uh, heartache, sorrow, uh, tears. Uh, he's come at all of us. If he was going to defeat you, he would have, he mucked his chance. He should have got you in those two years that you spent 
uh, there, Sister Esther, by in, the, in the low place of your life. But he mucked his chest. He mucked his chest. Yes, he did. He mucked the ball. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, he's had his best shot at me, and he hasn't been able to defeat the gospel in my spirit yet. He hasn't been able to uh, defeat the Christ in me yet. Did you know he's had his best shot at you? And he's still a liar. And he still can't defeat. And he still can't overcome. Praise the name of the Lord. Prayer. He is not going to defeat the church. Bless the name of the Lord. He's had his best chance in the movement. He's put politics in movements. He's put division in religious movements and churches. He's put iniquity. He's brought, raised up men that wanted to be charlatans of power, demagogues of power, politicians. He's put lies in. He's put slander in. He's put illness in. He's put habits in. He's put disease in. And still, the church is marching on. And still, the church is marching on. He's put backsliding in. He's let key members backslide. Satan said, oh boy, if I let her backslide, if I let him backslide, did you know when he got Judas? He thought, I, I've defeated them now. I, I've absolutely defeated this Christ. This Jesus cannot triumph. He can't triumph now. Yeah, Judas is going to sell him out. Uh, and Jesus loved Judas. And, and uh, uh, Satan thought, well, this will smite his heart. This will stop him from going uh, to the cross. Uh, but he didn't. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When he went to the grave, he said, he's dead. Satan said, he's dead, he can't arise, but he arose, praise the name of the Lord. He went back to the Father, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How do you know he did, Brother Warlock? Because I've got him in my heart. He couldn't be in that grave and be in my heart. He couldn't be in that grave and be in my spirit. Hallelujah. He isn't in the grave. So I said, how do you know Jesus really was real? How do you know he really lived? How do you know he's got out of the grave? Because it's in my heart. How can he be in the grave and be in my heart? How, how can he be in my heart and be in a grave somewhere? See, the devil couldn't defeat him, and the devil can't defeat you. He's had you down. He's won. I doubt there's a person in here that hasn't been won by Satan. Satan threw his best thing at you. Uh, discouraged, upset your home, yeah. tore your uh, family apart for a while, worked on you, uh, but he still didn't defeat you. You're out here tonight singing, praise the Lord. You're here tonight to give him glory. Praise the name of the Lord. See, Satan is not going to defeat you. It doesn't matter what he throws in the church. It doesn't matter what he comes against it. He worked, I told Brother Harris up in Blair, talking to him yesterday. I said, Brother Harris, he's thrown his best shot at us. I said, uh, I've been a pastor for 50-some years. I said, the longer you pastor, uh, the more ammunition Satan gets to try to bring you down. I said, just look at him and say, you fired your shotgun. You fired your long-range weapon. You, you, uh, you got your cannon at me. But look right at him and say, in the name of Jesus, you are alive. And you're going to the bottom of pit. Yes. Amen. I got I felt that victory. I felt that victory. Praise the name of the Lord. I know, I know. And finally, at the end of it all, here we are now, 2,000 years from now. Somebody said, that's a long time, Brother Marlowe. You won't know much about it because uh, you're going to be sleeping for a while. Uh, in Christ, I pray. And then, if not, you'll be awaiting the final resurrection. Uh, but uh, that, you won't, that time will pass by very quickly. And suddenly, the world and the earth will be right here at the end of the uh, eighth day, and uh, ni the ninth day is the time of birth. Eighth is circumcision. Seventh is Sabbath. Six is man. Five is faith. Praise the name of the Lord. So uh, God has something for every day. Every day he has something to give to the earth. And here in, uh, in the uh, 12th verse, uh, or the 11th verse rather, in Revelation 20, he said, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. The earth and the heaven is the earth of man, the first earth, and the heaven of men, the first heaven. That belongs to man. First heaven and first earth belongs to man. And that will flee away. And then the scripture said in verse 12, And I saw the dead, and I saw the dead, small and great, Stand before God, and the books were open. These books are going to be open. 
The books are going to be open. Praise the name of the Lord. The books are going to be open, and the book of their life is going to be open, and then another book was open, which is the book of life. That's the resurrection uh, book. That's the names of those that are righteous that will be in that book of life. That's the godly. That's the holy. The book of life. I, I, I thank God for the book of life because if that book of life is there, then I'll be judged properly and the dead were judged out of those things or those people will at that time will, were judged out of those things which were written in the books. We're going to be judged out of this right here as they will be in the conclusion of the last great conflict, the last great battle, uh, the battle of Gog and Magog, not Armageddon, but Gog and Magog, the last battle. They're going to be judged out of the, the same books that I'll be judged out of in the first resurrection, in the time of the dead being raised when Christ comes. Uh, the same books will still be used. Uh, they'll be judged out of the books of the, the, the things that are written, the judgment of God. And the, the, right now, these books are going to judge me here. They're going to judge me in the first resurrection. They will judge me if I happen to come forth after the thousand years and be in that number. At that time, they will judge me. I will be judged out of these books. And he said, uh, now according to whether I've obeyed them, I've walked in them, I've given myself to them, or I've turned away from them. And look what happens here. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works, according to their works. See, grace saves you, but according to your works, you're judged. Everybody get that. I want you to remember that. See, you're saved by grace. Amen. But according to your works, you're judged. Yes. I'm saved by grace. Saved by but according to my works, I'm judged. Yes. Works does not save me. Works. But works can judge me. Yes. According to my works, yes. if it's good or evil, if it's right or wrong, if it's pure or unpure, impure, if it's holy or unholy, I'll be judged according to my works. And they will too at the conclusion of all things. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, the destructive elements that has destroyed man from the beginning of creation, death and hell, that's the destructive elements that destroys man death and hell. Amen. That's the two great destructive judgments of mankind. They will be cast into this last great lake of fire, uh, into the lake of fire, uh, the God and Magog, and this becomes the second death or the second time that man is judged in such a manner. Uh, he is judged one time in a lake of fire, and then he's judged in the lake of fire. Two great holocaust judgments, and uh, this is the second death. And whats, uh, whatsoever or whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So you know, in conclusion, in conclusion, uh, I, I really don't have anything to fear if my name is written in the book of life. Amen. The Bible said uh, the only people that go into this lake of fire and are judged according to their works, and they, uh, they, they receive the second death, are those that their names yes. are not found right. written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. But if my name is in the Book of Life, I don't have to fear that. Amen. I don't have to fear that. And either conflict of Armageddon or Gog and Magog, either a lake of fire or the lake of fire, I don't have to fear that because my name is written in the Book of Life. I want my name written, I believe it is tonight, I believe it was written many years ago. I don't think God's ever erased it. I don't think he's ever taken it out. Right. All my uh, flesh uh, uh, sins uh, in this life, I don't think he's taken it out. I think he forgave me. I think he put me in the book of life. I believe tonight my Jesus is still the Lord of my life. I believe he's the Lord of your life. Don't sit in a gloomy place and be a prisoner of self or anybody else. Amen. You can be a prisoner of yourself, or you can be a prisoner of somebody else. Amen. See, whose jailer do you have? 
Uh, what's the name of your jailer? Uh, well, what's the name of your jailer? Uh, is it somebody else? Or is it yourself? Well, whoever it is, just tell them you want out of jail. Uh, that he made you free. That you're going to be free. And finally, you will be free because